Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, we're going to go right to strategy number four for maximizing your Social Security benefits, and that is minimizing taxation of those benefits. A lot of people don't realize that your Social Security benefits are, in fact, taxable income, depending on what kind of money you make as to how much so. So the net on taxation of Social Security benefits, if we look at the table, if you're married filing jointly, all right, now this is called a provisional income formula. And basically it's taking your adjusted gross income plus 50% of your Social Security benefit and you also add in any tax exempt interest that you may otherwise not be subject to tax, but would be subject to this formula. So if a person, if married filing jointly, if you're making between uh, 32,000 to 44,000, then up to 50% of your benefits can be taxed. And it's a graduated formula once you cross over. And if it's over 44,000, so again, think about how that, how that works. You look at whatever your other incomes are. If you have a pension, if you have rental income, uh, work income, wages, of course, and then you add in one half of your combined for a married couple, one half of your social security benefits, you add that together and it exceeds these numbers, which were established back in the 80s and 90s, by the way, and have never changed, uh, you would have potentially up to 85% of your social security benefits could be taxed. If you're single, and you make over 34000 again, counting half of your Social Security, then up to 85% of your benefits could be fat taxed. So that now that would be t new taxable income added in. This is real important when you think about strategizing because it comes into play too. If you're taking required minimum distributions from your IRAs or 401Ks or TSP, whatever it is, so when you reach that age and you start receiving those, you may not have been paying Social Security or tax on your Social Security benefits and all of a sudden that could cause you to pay them. Getting ahead of that with some strategies, this is where Roth conversions and other things can come into play that may make sense in terms of helping reduce those required minimum distributions in the future, which may then uh, reduce your uh, future taxable income as well. This worth, again, planning. You gotta be able to look to the future to see the impact of the decisions you make today. Each and every year, you have the opportunity to improve your situation, but you need a good plan to do that, a good comprehensive plan. All right, reduce other income. Ways to minimize taxes on Social Security benefits. Reduce other income with tax advantage investments, right? That's what we're talking about, like with Roth conversions. Remember, municipal bonds aren't gonna work for that. Anticipate IRA of required minimum distributions, right? Again, that higher tax factor could push you up from a 15, I commonly see this happen, in fact, where RMDs require minimum distributions. And that what that means is when you reach age 70 and a half, the IRS says, okay, no more tax deferral on these IRAs and 401ks and the money you've been leaving in there growing tax deferred. You now have to start taking at least this minimal amount. And it starts out with a divisor that's right around a little less than 4% and increases over the years. That could cause you to have to pay taxes on your Social Security. It might push you into a higher tax bracket from say 15 to 25%. That's a pretty significant jump. That's like a 60 some percent increase in your tax rate. Anticipate these, convert to, to, to traditional to Roth is one of the strategies to use for that. Delaying Social Security reduces the number of years benefits are subject to tax. We do that all the time. When we look at the benefits, when it's best to receive, the other is when you take your, your, your RMD. I said 70 and a half, but depending on what that is, we get to delay, we could potentially delay a year, and sometimes from a tax standpoint, that could be beneficial. Uh, reducing your expenses, paying down debt, and other things. This is ways we can maybe take money out of re those, those retirement accounts and pay off other things over, again, keeping you in a lower tax bracket so that we can manage your taxes throughout retirement. Right, that's the, that's getting the, the ta ahead of the tax thing is so critical and it's part of what we do with the planning. Again, I'm gonna throw it out there. For the first 10 callers to my office, this part is so important to get this right ab about the decisions with regard to Social Security, about Medicare, about how to reduce your taxes on these. So for the first 10 callers to my office, 615-376-5325, Tess is standing by, she'll get your information, she'll send you out a, a little form to fill out and a checklist of things to bring to your appointment with me so we can do up a full comprehensive plan for you. So again, Tess is standing by, 615-376-5325. First 10 callers and when you come in, I'll give you a free copy of my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom in Retirement. Okay, we're gonna take another break 
Join us here. We're going to get right back into this. Hopefully it's been a big help to you. There's much more to come. Join us here. We'll be right back on the Retirement Report. 